today about unconventional leaders, and one of those is definitely the bulletproof executive. Dave Asprey decided one day he was going to take control of his health. He didn't listen to anyone else. He just set out to find out what worked and what didn't. And now Dave Asprey is known as the bulletproof executive. Dave Asprey, welcome to Smart Life. Good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Now, uh, you know, a lot of leaders, uh, you, you take Chris Christie, for example, and I think our country is so wanton for leadership, but you take someone like Chris Christie, who obviously has some really strong leadership skills, but there are studies that say, Dave, that some people don't want to vote for him only because they feel like, well, if he can't control his own health, how can he control the health of a nation? Uh, how can he make those changes and other people like him who maybe are, are producing great work results in the leadership realm but just aren't really producing those same results internally? How can they make those changes in their lives? Imagine a politician who didn't actually pay attention to what he was doing uh, with his numbers. If he simply said, I don't, I don't really know what the public thinks about me, that's what's happening with most people's health right now. They aren't getting the numbers. They aren't tracking results. Politicians know what when they're dealing with the public, but they don't know what works when they're dealing with their diet. By looking at the mirror, looking at the scale, they can see if the strategies they've tried worked or didn't work. And most people make the mistake of trying harder, doing the same things that didn't work before. What I did and what I do with the Bulletproof Diet is I specifically look at what works fastest with the least amount of effort. And it turns out a high healthy fat diet with moderate protein and not a lot of carbohydrates can make a huge difference in how you feel. I designed the diet for mental impact, which gives politicians and everyone else an edge because their brain works longer every day on the same amount of food. That brings up a great point, Dave. If you were to advise someone on, on uh, you know, the, 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 maybe the nutritional factors, I guess, that most contribute to healthy leadership all the way around. You know, obviously being quick, being quick on your feet, being able to be decisive, being creative, uh, innovative, I think is one of the strongest features of, uh, of, uh, of leadership. What would you say, Dave, is the most important, if you had to give top three most important things you can do if you want to spruce up your leadership nutrition, I guess, what, what would those factors be? I do coaching for CEOs and uh, uh, even some professional athletes and professional recording artists about this exact thing. And it comes down to managing stress. If you eat right, your body is less stressed. So you need to eat more of the right kinds of fat, a lot less sugar, and especially gluten. Gluten just makes your brain slower. So when you get those things down, all of a sudden you think faster and your memory works better. If you eat for your brain, you effortlessly lose weight and you don't have any cravings. When you have less cravings, you have more capacity for decision making. If you got a hold of the next big CEO, the next uh, Steve Jobs of the world, uh, what would you assess on them first? What, in other words, what would you have uh, our listeners and viewers, what would you have them assess on themselves first? Surprisingly, the number one request I get from high-performance people isn't weight loss. It's sleep. They have a hard time going to sleep or they have a hard time staying asleep. Hmm. And we can address those nutritionally. And in fact, I write a lot about sleep hacking on my blog. So once we start addressing sleep, it's easier for them to lose weight and their brain works better all day long. Then they add in the nutritional interventions that work <clears throat> during the day. <clears throat> and they're much, much happier and they perform better. They're even nicer at home. Now, I think it's interesting because you brought up sleep, and yet you are the creator of Bulletproof Coffee. <laughs> I love coffee, use it all day long, have realized just lately that I can't drink it, a lot of it anyway, late at night. But what do you recommend um, as far as a caffeine intake and other sleep tips, if that's the number one thing that lends itself to good leadership? That's important to know. Well... Don't drink coffee after 2 p.m. It's going to affect your sleep quality. Even if you can go to sleep, your sleep won't be very good. And who wants to waste time on bad sleep? You want to sleep really hard and really deep in the hours you do get. So with coffee, with Bulletproof Coffee specifically, this is my coffee beans that are designed to not have a crash. So you don't get that brain fog that comes when the coffee wears off. Mixed with grass-fed butter, which you can buy at most grocery stores, and an oil called brain octane oil. 
When you blend these three things together, it tastes like an amazing latte, but it turns off food cravings for about six hours. I mean, you don't care about food, and it turns your brain on all the way. So I say do that in the morning, maybe even instead of breakfast, and you'll have a day like no other. There are people who do this before they go into the recording studio. The Los Angeles Lakers just mentioned they drink bulletproof coffee before games. It's something that world champion athletes and professional fighters do before they go into the ring because they get that much energy from the right coffee beans mixed with the right oils. Hmm. Interesting. And those oils and fats are important. Tell us more about the oils and fats that are important to proper brain function because I think we're still sort of stuck in this, uh, this realm of thinking that fat is somehow bad for us. So I think when we're sort of lumping health all into one nice, tidy little ball, a lot of times we throw fat out uh, with some of the other things that aren't as good for us, like the glutens that you mentioned. So what is important about fat? What does it do and how much of it should we have and what kind? It does make sense to throw fat out because we've been taught to eat unhealthy fats for so long that if you think all fats are the same, you shouldn't eat them. It turns out the traditional fats that we've eaten for thousands of years, like butter from healthy animals or even things like coconut oil, they have unique qualities to them that specifically help the brain. Butter, for instance, has conjugated linoleic acid or CLA only if the cows ate grass. So these have to be like Irish butter cows. Butter like Kerry Gold is particularly effective for that. Oh, interesting. When you, when you eat that, it actually can turn off some of the inflammatory factors in your brain, just the CLA and another thing called butyric acid. But the real amazing oil, and what's been a breakthrough for me personally, is the brain octane oil. Brain octane is extracted from coconut oil, but it's just the purest 4% of the oil. And when you use that as brain fuel, your body can convert it into cellular energy called ATP in only three steps. If you eat, say, a Snickers bar or something full of sugar, sugar takes 26 steps. And we've just proven that the brain likes to, to use fat as fuel even more than it likes to use sugar, which is a breakthrough in science. No one had ever offered brain cells their choice of fat or sugar at the same time and noticed that they would choose the fat first. So you always make sure there's enough of the right kinds of fat, like brain octane and grass-fed butter, some protein of good quality protein, and a moderate amount of good carbohydrates like sweet potatoes or white rice or something that doesn't have gluten in it. And when you do that, as a politician, when someone gets your goat and say you're on stage, someone on a debate, someone says something that's really going to irritate you and make you mad, you're more level-headed. You have control and you can think. And then you can have a reasoned response instead of an emotional response. And really, who doesn't want to do that all day long? Now, you say that you should think of your body almost like a computer. You talk about your hardware and your software. Um, make that analogy for us. Help us to understand how we can think of ourselves, of our bodies, our nervous system in particular, uh, as, a, as a computer and how that can aid us in our keeping track of our own nutrition. We evolved to make sure that our meat survives, like the physical flesh of our bodies, just like all animals. So... There's, that's our hardware. And if your hardware isn't working well, of course your software won't work very well. And on top of that hardware, we have this software in our, in our brain. And the software is set up to make sure that the meat survives, you know, that your body itself survives. So you'll default to this basic operating mode, more like what a mammal, any animal would do. But then the higher level consciousness, like the applications in our body, your higher level emotions and the part of you that you identify as yourself, that is the most precious part of you, but it's also the part of you that fails first if there isn't enough fuel or if you're not feeling well or you're not rested. And this is why if you want to be all you can be, <clears throat> all you can be as a human being, that you pay attention to proper fuel because you lose the best parts first when your hardware isn't working or your software isn't working. That's why this type of brain fuel and eating for your head, that's why it makes you feel good. That's why it makes your brain work. And that's why it also naturally makes you just lose weight without trying. I've lost 100 pounds and kept it off for more than 10 years. That, that's truly, truly amazing. And, and, and so for people who want to understand their own bodies, because I, I'm one of those who definitely believes that uh, nutrition and health are very specific. I know people that certain things work really well for and they just don't work for me. And I know things that work really well for me that would never work for someone else. So if people want to understand more about their own sensitivities in their own body, um, do you have something like that on your website for people? Yes, on bulletproofdietbook.com, 
you can download for free an infographic that contains all of the dietary recommendations that I make in my book that's coming out soon. This is something you can just print out and put in your refrigerator, and it will tell you these foods are less inflammatory than these foods. These fats are the ones that turn your brain on and make you feel good, and these are the fats that cause inflammation and make you tired. Well, that so is going to go on. Is that is definitely going to go on my refrigerator today. Dave Asprey, thank you so much for being with us. We will look forward to that book, and we'd like to have you back on then, okay? Thank you. All right. Up next, we are going to go through the different leadership styles for you. We're going to let you know what works, what doesn't. And remember, coming up later in the show, we're going to go to your calls and emails. My favorite part of the show, the number, 888-650-8176. Or you can go to the Smart Life page at moneybizlife.com. Click on Ask Dr. Gina and send us an email. More Smart Life coming up for you right after this. Stay tuned.